Okie dokie. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel is such a massive and complex book. Ezekiel um, might even be more complex than the book of Revelation. My opinion, Revelation is very complex. The book of the apocalypse, the Revelation, spans a lot of years into eternity, into infinity, and then goes backwards at times, pointing back into uh, uh, history of, you know, before our historical knowledge of the earth exists, during the time of the earth, and then beyond. Ezekiel takes his concept to where Israel is, backslidden, talks about things of the past, talks about things in detail, what is going to happen in, in the new earth and during the thousand year reign. And then kind of allows you a glimpse into the eternities, into the future. Revelation has it fulfilled and we just don't understand everything Revelation says. Ezekiel kind of points us towards the book of Revelation, though they didn't, they didn't have the book of Revelation. Uh, at then, in written form. So anyway, here we go, chapter 2 of Ezekiel. Pretty cool book. We're still kind of laying the foundation. Uh, kind of like doing the warm-up sets in the gym, in the Bears gym here. Doing some warm-up sets kind of sets the foundation of your workout. In the morning, as I start my day, I like to start in reading a a a chapter or so in each of the Gospels before I begin the rest of my Bible studies and um, kind of sets a nice frame of mind for me. And, and some, some people like to read the Psalms every day. Sometimes I do that in addition to that, the reading of the Gospels. But I like to hit each of the four Gospels a little bit first thing as I start my day and then go from there, study the New and Old Testament. And that's just kind of my thing. Been that way for a long time. And uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 and 2 are kind of that. They're kind of the laying forth the foundation of your Bible study day and what you're going to hit next. So here we go. Hopefully I put that in a nutshell. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so here we go. We're going we're gonna to move. And he said unto me, remember chapter 1, um, we're now into the third heaven, where our heavenly father Yahweh is, the son of God, um, is there as, at his right hand, the angels, and uh, there's a, the, the creatures with the, the wheels, remember, that, with the eyes. And now we have a, an angelic being. giving discourse on behalf of our Heavenly Father and the Son of God and the Holy Spirit in the throne, conveying now to Ezekiel how to prepare himself, what to do. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. If you can have a nation like Israel that had all the truth, they had the law, they had the prophets, they had the word of God in their midst, and yet they chose to commit evil, then you, my friend, if you're a Christian out there listening to me, realize to entertain the things of the world um, can take you down fast, little by little, listening to the TV and the sitcoms and how they're telling you, oh, this is okay and that's okay. No, if, if the Word of God says it's not okay, then it's not okay. 
If the word of God says it's good, then it's good. So we have to be careful of what is around us and realize we are the salt. We are the light representing Christ unto the world. And sometimes we don't do a very good job because sometimes we are dumb sheep. We're dumb bears and we make mistakes and we stumble and we fall. We've got to get up. The righteous man falls seven times and you've got to get up seven times. Say, yep, I did the wrong thing and I'm sorry. I repent. I confess my sins. To not only to Christ and to God, our Father, but to those that know. You know, it's, it's a cleansing effect. Confessing your sins is a, has a cleansing effect. doesn't matter what people think. It matters that you're clean. Of all these mass suicides that are happening around the world in our country, these people would understand the unleashing, the unburdening, the freeing that Christ can do for them if they would simply confess their sins. And they'd be free. There would be far less suicides. Because the people that know the truth, they're not going to commit suicide. If you're in Christ, you're not going to commit suicide because you have hope. No matter what situation you're in, you have hope. People that commit suicide are burdened and guilt, guiltified. That's kind of a new bear word, guiltified. By the things they've done. And they don't want to confess them and come clean. And Christ is waiting to cleanse them, but you have to be willing to confess your sins and be clean. If everybody in the world would simply confess their sins and come clean to Christ, there would be zero suicides in the world the very next day. No suicides. By simply confessing your sins to Christ and your brothers that you've sinned against, or your husband or your wife, or whoever, or just before God alone. And Jesus, I am this and I'm that, and I confess my sins and I give it unto you. And if you have to go to the authorities because you've committed a, a cardinal crime in society, murder, rape, incest, thievery, brew, if you have to go to the authorities, then you do. That's part of confessing your sins. But you'll be clean. And you'll have eternal security then. That's when you have eternal security, when you abide in the word of God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Because the commandments are the word. And the word is the commandments. And the word is the truth. And when you have it in your heart, it just, you can't help it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bubble out. If you make the choice. And if you haven't made the choice... The Lord Jesus Christ is right at the tip of your tongue. The word is in you and near you if you only confess your sins, as Romans, Romans 10 says. To confess Jesus as Lord. Make the choice. It'll be easy after that. Confess your sins. Give it all up. Go to your brother, your sister, the authorities, whatever it takes. Get clean. Verse 4. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted, and I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they say, Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet amongst them. Jeremiah was a prophet that was stuck in a rough bunch of folks. Religious Jews and people that heard the good news their whole life and yet decided to reject that and worship demon gods, Islamabubs and Buddhas and Hindus and of that culture. We have the same thing here. It's just called different things. It's just Satan worship. If you're not worshiping the one true God, you're worshiping Satan. And that's what they were doing. They knew the truth, but they continued worshiping Satan. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, 
Hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. He's about, Ezekiel's about to get uh, a nice little prophetic meal. And sometimes a prophetic meal tastes really good. But in the end, you're saddened by it because you know it's a harsh truth against a nation or a people or a person. But it's still meaningful because God has given you something. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Once again, sadness. It's kind of like you've been woken up with a dream because you have something going on in your life, somebody you know has something going on in your life, and it's revealed to you what's to be done, what you need to do. And then it boils down to, are you going to do it? And sometimes it's hard, and that's the uh, reckoning and the awakening that Ezekiel has of this, this prophetic meal. And in the next chapter, when we get to it next, next time, he eats this roll, and it was sweet as honey. It was honey, yummy, yummy, you know. It's like you can eat in bear chocolate from Germany. Yum, you know. But afterwards, very much like when you eat chocolate from Germany, it tastes really good in your mouth and makes you feel really good. But after a little while, you got a little tummy ache and your blood sugars are through the roof and you feel sleepy. You want to have an, a nap in, the, in your bear chair, right? Well, this was very much like it. I'm just going to peek forward just an instant. In Ezekiel 3, he says, I opened my mouth, and when I ate it, it was as honey for sweetness. And very much like chocolates from Germany, right? You eat too much of it, and then you don't feel good afterwards. Ezekiel here eats this scroll and is full of woe and mourning and he's got to give the message and that's hard. That makes your belly a little b bitter. But you got to do the job. And it's pleasing to fulfill God's assignment. But sometimes it makes your belly a little bitter as you're getting prepared to do it. When, you're, when you've fulfilled the mission and delivered the word or you know, exhortation, whatever it is, then, then it feels great because you've, you've done God's will. But sometimes before you're kind of setting up for it, then it's, you're a little bit tight in the tummy. And like Ezekiel's meal of the scroll, honey in the mouth, a little toughness in the tummy. All right, next time we're going to hammer through chapter 3 of Ezekiel. Today we had chapter 2. Kind of a short one, um, but lovely. And once again, still kind of setting up the, uh, your, the workout, the spiritual workout, um, like a good warm-up before uh, a good uh, bear iron session. Okay, God bless you. And from Canute and I in the Church of the Living Room here in Wisconsin, we'll see you next time.